actually used scooters in the day in the late 60s and 70s uh, when I was 16 to 24 and um, then came back into it 10 years ago thought I'd buy that just instead of scooters and I ended up with with eight of them and a lot of development uh, this is the last one I bought which is a, a Bob White 60s 64 um, TV 200 actually GT 200 uh, with the buff book and bought that from his estate when he died so this is the probably the nicest bike I've got and I've got no intention of riding it it'll sit here and on, on display so this one's the oldest one which is the 52d which is my age that's why I bought it <laughs> uh, LD from 57 58 frame breather series 1 um, and a, 50, a 60 series 2 um, rebuilt by nurse of, of, it, of Italy they're, they're all up together full in the centre as everything is apart from the, the tune parts on the other bikes now, the, these don't move they just sit here they're drained out of, of fuel and oil just for anybody that's thinking you knocking on and you're not running really speed <laughs> right so those are some of the race cars i've i've driven uh the black and gold one is a gt1 which i won a european championship with in in uh, 07 uh sports cars of various descriptions uh, a few cups lying about I suppose your missus is a bit like mine, so they have trophies on the shelf in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. And um, GT3, such as Viper, Ginetta. Uh, touring cars in 88 with, with the Sierra Cosworth. And this was one I built myself in 89, uh, Chevrolet Camaro. Are you still racing today? Still racing today, yes. So um, GT3, 650 horsepower, 1100 kilos, and um, maybe changing to Audi GT3. So that, that SX200 was a working scooter that I bought, and we haven't done anything on the body or the running gear. We've just increased the power from eight and a half at the rear wheel to over I think 15 and a half and a lot of torque but using period parts so there's no tricks on that it's just experience standard barrel period del auto 222 to, to 224 and the sip exhaust they're all 10 miles an hour per, per thousand um, this hasn't got a sip speed though, so I don't know exactly what that revs to, but it's it's 70 or 7,000. This one I bought as is with the, the paintwork done. Uh, the frame was left original, but the, the, the outside paintwork was refurbished. With the running gear, it's got um, suspension and, and brakes. With an SS200 engine, which was originally 22 horsepower and 12 pounds feet. And we've kept the SS200, but developed it, original block small block and we've now got over 40 horsepower and over 26 pounds feet right back to 6,000 so that that's a good touring bike having said that the SX200 is probably the, the the sweetest touring bike it'll do 65 or 70 the, the, the SX200 can you just tell us about that um, reverse scoop yes quite interesting yes so the reverse scoop was put on because Without a scoop, the air temperature was about 30 degrees above ambient going into the carburetor. 
and sucking dirty air from the floor because there's a vacuum in, under the, in the engine bay. The reverse scoop doesn't pressurise the carburetor and give a weak mixture, but gives enough air for the carburetor to breathe well. And it takes very clean air from the side and there's no grit at all enters the carburetor. The, the bell mouth keeps as clean as it was when you started. So this one has got a 40 mil electron instead of 48. And again, the same downdraft manifold and it goes into the reed vertically so that you get the good, um, good the right flow for the reed. And again, the two to one ratio. Yeah. Is that something that Gary's made? Yes, yeah. yes. You, you, there's available a 30% increase, but that wasn't enough because yeah. we need we need double the, yeah. the movement. It's a yeah. little bit heavy on the throttle, yeah. but um, you need that. This is an SX150 with a CASA SSR engine. Um, I bought it standard, so we converted it to CASA running gear, brakes, suspension, and the engine. We then developed the engine from 45 horsepower to over 70 and over 40 pounds feet and we still get 30 horsepower at, at 6,000 RPM. It, it was that quick that I couldn't hold the front down, no matter what gear I was in. So we extended the frame by 8 inches, 200 mil, moved the seat forward, so I sit very, I think about 2 feet or 600 millimeters further forward than standard, and we've got 40% more restoring moment resisting wheelies than a standard bike. Um, it's still probably close to wheelies, but it's, it's holding. So if I was to sit, if I was to sit where a normal racing position would be, because this is a short back seat, I'd be sitting there, but I actually sit here. So my, I'm probably 100 kilos, or 90 kilos actually, um, a long way forward, plus the weight of the bike has moved, has gone up and up slightly because of the, the stretch, extra metal, and gone forward uh, 200 mil, uh, and we put a, some strengthening in. So I think we're about 10 kilos heavier than standard, but 40% more restoring moment. Mm -hmm. And, and the, 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 um, the driving position is, is pretty good for me. Uh, another thing we have is a, a steering damper to stop the wobble. And also, these are extended for two reasons, the, the, the grips. One is to give me room for, for off the throttle, moving off throttle. Because bearing in mind that half throttle is still 50 horsepower. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do don't close the throttle, you can't shift gear. So I need, I need space. I wear proper racing gloves, so I need, and a, and a full suit, so I need proper room there. And also we've put weight in the handlebars to stop any movement. So with the damping, it's pretty good on the road. So I race GT3 race cars, which are 650 horsepower and 1100 kilos, plus the fuel and the driver. So that's, I think that's about 450 horsepower a ton. That's a GT3. Uh, I used to run GT4, which have 400 horsepower and 1,000 kilos plus driver. 
which is about 320 horsepower a ton. And this with me on it is about 320 horsepower a ton. So this is as fast as a, a mid-range GT race car. And it's so fast with the acceleration that I have not got time to look down at the RPM on the SIP Speedo. And we're gonna to have to put a, a screen here with the shift light system here so I can see it in my peripheral view. Otherwise, I can't keep track of the revs are just doing that so quickly. I suppose we better hear what it sounds like then. Right, this one, <laughs> just this one. see we've got um, 48 millimeter carb and a special downdraft manifold fabricated so it goes straight into the very a very big reed yeah. um, v-force reed yeah. so it, it fills out and the velocity is good because it's actually vertical as it goes into the reed um, we've got two to one relay on the throttle so we keep 90 degree movement on the, yeah. on the twist yeah. grip. What tyres are you running? Uh, Dunlop on these. Yeah, scoops, yeah. yeah, to get a bit of grip. Yeah. Hang, up, hang the expense of the wear. <laughs> <laughs> and they've got good ratings as yeah. well. You see the tank, we've got um, level gauge there. Yeah. And we've got the Mikuni pump there. 